Hey everybody, welcome back to the Serving Pleasure Podcast. I'm Ethan Jesse. And I'm Harry Oaks. And this is the podcast where we talk about trashy romance novels. After months of being away from trashy romance novels. I don't even remember. best kind of novels. I don't remember how they fucking work anymore. Actually, so... Since the last time you people have heard me, I started taking improv classes in Chicago uh, to keep me busy during my unemployment fun. And we had a book exchange. Uh, Harry, this is the cover of the, the book that I got during the book exchange in my improv class. Oh my god, Dance with the Devil. What does that take? What's that little... It's, uh, <clears throat> Dance with the Devil by Sherilyn Kenyon. He promises the most forbidden desire and the most tempting. So I think we should probably just do this. Not right, right not, not now. This is, oh, by the way, this is Bone Rider episode something. Chapter 8. Chapter 8, probably. Surprised we are in Chapter 8. Episode 9. I hope we are, otherwise I have to go back. <laughs> no, I, uh... Did you double oh. check? No. God I... damn it, Harry! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm checking now. I just opened my... Oh yeah, no, we're on Chapter 8. Okay. If you say so. We're in chapter eight because when I opened my Kindle, it was like Bone Rider was waiting for me, like, hi, I missed you while you were away. I thought you were obsessed with me, which I have been for the past two months. I still vividly remember what has happened in Bone Rider, even though we have not been reading Bone Rider. How did we get to chapter? Oh, okay. So we've done two episodes where we do two chapters in one. Yes, because some of the chapters are super short. Like this so. one. <laughs> what? Like this episode is going to be, which is half the reason I'm just fucking killing time right now. <laughs> hey, you know what, Ethan? If anything, this is us getting to know each other again, and this is our audience witnessing our union, because now we are not in the same city or the same state. So. <laughs> Sorry, I accidentally read ahead in the, in the chapter. No, we are not in the same state. Stop reading! I, it's it's right in front of me. Look away. I'm looking Look away. away. I'm Look looking, at Dance with the Devil. I'm looking at Xerix. Can I read this? Yeah. Right. No, I want to read this. Wait, the, who gave this to you in your improv class? Because you should be best friends with them. It was anonymous. <gasps> they have good taste. They do. Which, it, like, well, the book exchange is permanently giving a book away, so they probably didn't want this. So, what were some of the other books? Any more romance? No, no? this is the this was the only romance one. It was the last one in the bag, and I managed to pick it up. Yes. Uh, but all the other stuff was like sci-fi, like Bone Rider or. Um... Oh my God, Bone Rider was in there. No, Bone Rider wasn't in there. Oh my God, because then you definitely lost with Dance with the Devil if you didn't pick up Bone Rider. This was the only book that was worth the time. I'm glad I got this one. I'm gonna read. I'm, I'm gonna read the summary to you. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited. All right. Zarek's point of view. Zarek. Zarek is the main character's name. Okay. A dark, dark hunter, a soulless guardian who stands between mankind and those who would see mankind destroyed. <laughs> yeah, right. The only part of that code of honor I got was an etern was eternity and solitude, insanity, a condition many say I suffer from after being alone for so long. But I don't suffer from my insanity. I enjoy every minute of it. Trust. I can't trust anyone. Not even myself. <gasps> no. Trust nobody, not even yourself. <laughs> the only thing I trust is in is my ability to do the wrong thing in any situation and to put a hurt on anyone who gets in my way. That sounds relatable. Oh, the, I also trust myself to do the wrong thing in every situation. Well, guess what? It's about to get very not relatable. <clears throat> oh, oh. Truth. I endured a lifetime as a Roman slave. In 900 years as an exiled dark hunter. Now I'm tired of enduring. I want the truth about what happened the night I was exiled. Ooh. I have nothing to lose and everything to gain. <laughs> I'm not even done yet. I'm not even done. Oh my this is the longest God. summary I've ever read. Astrid. Greek, meaning star. An exceptional woman who can see straight to the truth. Brave and strong. She is a point of light in the darkness. She touches me, and I tremble. She smiles, and my cold heart shatters. Zarek. They say even the most damned man can be forgiven. I never believed that until the night Astrid opened 
her door to me and made this feral beast want to be human again. Made me want to love and be loved. But how can an ex-slave whose soul is owned by a Greek goddess ever dream of touching, let alone holding, a fiery star? Dance with the Devil cinches Cheryl and Kenyon's place as a master of the genre. Zarek is a hero to die for, said by Julie Kenner, author of Aphrodite's Secret. Ooh. Fancy. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. Uh, that's a big book, though. How many pages are in that? Uh, it's 360 pages. Really? 361. Oh, wait, hold on. No. <laughs> So there's a there's Is it a, 666 pages? No 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 no. It the 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 epilogue uh it g- takes it up to 361. But the actual book Oh sorry, no. There that's the spoilers for her next book, I think. No, it's a What? So so the book ends on page 343. But then there's an extra 20 pages for read on for a bonus Cheryl Kenyon story. A Dark Hunter Christmas. So I don't... We'll figure out... You, you know it's quality when there's a spin-off Christmas novel. This is based... That's when you know that an author in a series really has it going on. <laughs> this is the Disney Channel of erotic novels. That's the Disney Channel of erotic novels. We all if know... There is a... We all know I want to fuck the Disney Channel. Not anyone on it, just I mean, the channel. Just the channel it's- Let's get you like a nice plasma screen TV, a remote, <laughs> cable. And I'll get down to business. You'll get down to business. Hell yeah. Treat oh yeah. Treat yourself right. Oh, we've been recording for too long. Bone Rider, Chapter 8. Riley woke up by himself later that day. No 18 wheeler necessary. He didn't experience any disorientation either. He knew exactly where he was and how he'd gotten there. The curtains were closed and the AC unit turned off, so the room was dim and hot. Just like it's me. Just like you, it's not like you. You're so You're not dim, Ethan. And you have a bachelor's. I guess. Silence. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, it smelled like sex. A blend of salty sweat and musty spunk. Yeah. That was pungent. But not unpleasant. I don't know. That sentence is pretty unpleasant. It's pretty me. unpleasant, but I I don't know. Riley likes it. I, Riley does like it. Who am it. I to judge how much semen Riley likes hanging around? Right? Like... He's gonna clean it up. Maybe. 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 And it's about his personal residence. Who knows what he's gonna do? Alright. Forcing himself to stay still for a while, Riley took stock of his surroundings and the less tangible aspects of his overall condition. Condition. Unsurprisingly, he was alone. Unfortunately, the feeling that he wasn't had intensified. He was well rested, which meant he'd gotten at least eight hours of uninterrupted sleep. That is the doctor's recommendation. Eight hours. Mm-hmm. Good for him. He was also stuck to the covers and sore in places where he most definitely shouldn't have been sore. Carefully keeping his mind blank, he got himself unstuck and turned around to lie on his back and stare at the ceiling. He assumed it was probably beige. Why would but, you want to assume that, oh, this ceiling, fuck, it's probably beige. I don't know. I don't care. What is life but just ceilings above us? What is life? But a ceiling above me and my blankets covered in cum. Why am I so stuck? Perhaps it's because I'm stuck in this current life I live. I disgust myself, (laughs) but I revel in my disgust. Let me stick myself further. (laughs) Well, you know what? It was hard to tell in the gloom. Hard to tell in the gloom if that scene was beige. His nipples felt tender when his fingers skimmed over them. He swallowed. There was a little crack in the plaster next to the light fixture. His dick was soft and sensitive to the touch, which is to be expected, but the curtain rod needed dusting. Oh, Jay. Does he mean a literal curtain rod? Oh, no, no, no. He does mean a little curtain rod. I read on. Oh, shit. What? Oh, I did not think that was the case. 
I, I thought Curgeon Rod was this kind of well, like... Well, read on, because okay. it won't make sense to everybody else. The curtains were clean, though, as far as he could tell. He lifted one leg and gently traced a finger over the aching, yielding entrance to his body. Oh, never mind. That... Wait, definitely not his own doing. Curtains, he thought quickly. Dark, dark curtains. Man, he needed a shower. Is, no. is he talking about literal curtains, or are these kind of some kind of dirty analogy to his body? The curtain rod, uh, alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this in the most layman's terms possible. The curtain rod is his dick, uh, and the curtains are his pubes. Oh, but why would his curtains be not clean? Was he, was he thinking he got, like, crabs or something? I don't know, but... There's no, there's no semen on them. Oh, wow! You know what's yes. which is impressive considering that he got he was laying in a puddle of his own spunk. Right. Wow. I'm, Riley Cooper. I just learned so much. Riley Cooper, a man who never ceases to impress. Riley Cooper, man, <laughs> we thought he was dirty. Really, he's the cleanest of all. Gets I it know. elsewhere, but not his own body. I don't know. <laughs> Also, I am reading this as my window is wide open, so I hope my downstairs neighbors also have their windows open so they can listen to me read Bone Rider for them. Oh, good. Because really, like I said, I am just a public service. Everyone, enjoy Bone Rider. All right. The mattress barely squeaked when Riley got up abruptly. He went to the dresser and rummaged through his duffel for his toiletries bag and a change of clothes, then made his way to the bathroom. The neon lights activated with a buzz when he hit the switch, but Riley barely noticed the brightness in his effort not to look in the large mirror. He dropped his stuff onto the vanity, pissed, washed his hands, then grabbed his toothbrush and one of the small bars of generic soap and stepped into the bathtub. Uh, I would like to say that this uh, book is sponsored by Dove. They just didn't need to say it. Right? (laughs) Dove, look at you. Also, at first when I said he dropped onto his stuff onto the vanity, pissed. I was like, why is he mad? Why is he pissing on the vanity? Why is he pissing? <laughs> Riley Cooper pisses where he wants. <laughs> I'm the vanity pisser. Mm. <laughs> Get on the That's just like his like trademark kind of thing. You know, like in Home Alone, how you have the wet <laughs> bandits. <laughs> the, the, the hotel keepers. Uh, always like go into the room and they're like Riley Cooper was here. No, again he has conquered. You bastard! He's marked his territory. <laughs> Everyone will always know. The musk and spunk it's tastes like Riley. You, he's like the detective comes up like the fingertip like raw like. No, it's a, it's a, it's it's the easiest way for Kolya to track him. Exactly. I remember Kolya. We should have started this with a recap, but fuck it. Go I listen. I was thinking of that as a, should we do a recap now? No. <laughs> no. If you, hey, hey, everybody in the audience, you want a recap? Go listen to the other episodes again. I all two of you listening to this far in the episode. If you want a reminder, look, I'm very grateful that you followed us this far. Go back and listen to the old ones. They got like four views. They could use a boost. Tell your friends about it. I'm a little upset. I'm a little yeah, upset. Make it a family gathering. No, don't make it a family gathering. Why? Send the video to your to your friends and family while they're out. Yeah. And then come together and discuss and it. Listen- and then come up with game plans about how you can spread it. And listen, listen to it one more time all together. <laughs> you know, just keep listening to it. Give just keep listening to it. <laughs> just keep, keep, keep it going. Keep it going. Just keep it going. Put them all on loop. <laughs> just repeat. If you need to go to bed, if you need some soothing noise... Just watch. Just listen to Bone Rider. Ignore this part, though, because it's loud and grating. Right. <laughs> so just... just really listen to the chapters where Ethan reads, because that's an NPR voice. If you need to wake up in the morning, listen to my chapter. Just... <laughs> ah, my ears! <laughs> listen in the shower. <laughs> anyway. So the water was cold when it first hit him, and he was grateful for the distraction it provided. The not-thinking thing had never really worked for him, and he was having trouble staying in the zone. It helped to concentrate on the essentials. He adjusted the temperature and brushed his teeth while the water warmed and cleansed his sweaty skin and soaked his short hair until it was plastered to his skull. He spat and rinsed and stuck the toothbrush between his teeth while he washed himself quickly and efficiently. He chewed on the plastic grip a little, bounced it up and down, 
up and down, got a rhythm going that served to both distract and calm him. It worked until he got to cleaning between his legs. The lather burned just enough to make him extremely aware of how well used his body was. He closed his eyes, focused on the hard plastic between his teeth. Up, down. Up, down. Don't, Don't think. think. Don't, Don't think. think. He finished up swiftly, turned off the water, and snatched a towel from the rack. I thought he was in the tub the whole time. I did too. I thought it was weird. Nope, he's and taking a shower. He's taking a shower. Also, when they were saying up, down, up, down, I thought he was brushing his teeth. And I was like, wow, that's a really sensuous way to brush your teeth. And then I realized it was his body he was washing. Was it? When they were saying he chewed on the plastic grip a little, bounced it up and down, up and down, got a rhythm that going, and then he worked until he got to cleaning between his legs. Oh, that's the toothbrush. I get it. So he is brushing up and down? Or is he just chewing on it? I think he's... So he's got the... He's not brushing his teeth. He's just holding the, the, the plastic part of the toothbrush between, oh. his, between his teeth and then, like, just moving it back and forth. Why does he just get a piece of gum? That's equally as... He's in the shower! Whatever. Don't I chew gum in the shower? shower? <laughs> That's weird. What? I don't, I don't chew gum. There's a little That's piece a of trivia thing. about Ethan Jesse. I don't chew, I don't chew gum. Ever? I mean, like, if I forget to brush my teeth in the morning and I don't want my breath to smell like shit, I will. But usually that's the only way. Because I don't like having gum in my mouth when it's, like, not flavorful because I think I'm going to throw up. That's an intense reaction to flavorless gum. I'm, I'm very sensitive to, to tastes and smells. It's 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 a superpower as well as my weakness. <laughs> People who know me well uh, already know this about me, but uh, like if I if I walk by someone smoking a cigarette, like I start coughing and gagging, not to be like oh fuck you for smoking, but like because I can't breathe. This is fascinating. I never knew this about you. Yeah, I, I yeah, it's what it's one of the reasons I don't really go outside. Good. Cause I'm a because I'm a pussy. Hey, you know what? It's just because you have a crippling weakness that is also your strength. Mm -hmm. I'm like a dog man. <laughs> I'm like dog man. Dog man. It's me, oh dog man. That could be the cutest superhero outfit. You just wear like a dog onesie and you run around no. like, yipping and laughing things. Oh, it could be like a like like a furry. Like a. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> you could indeed. Either. Congratulations, Harry. You invented the furry. Yes! Speaking of other things that are furry, let's get back to Riley's balls. Let's get. Graphic. <laughs> we... Riley finished up swiftly, turned off the water, and snatched a towel from the rack. Dried up, stepped out of the tub, stuck his toothbrush into one of the complimentary plastic cups. Put on underwear, jeans, and a t-shirt. Grabbed his shaving kit, shaved. Everything was done calmly, methodically, with great care and diligence. He needed the time to get a handle on his situation, work it through without thinking too loud, because there might just be something listening in. When he was done both with his morning rituals and the underlying data processing, he slowly lifted his head and finally met his own gaze in the mirror. His eyes looked back at him solemnly, slate gray in the harsh, artificial light. Nothing unusual about them. No marks on his face. His throat didn't feel raw anymore. He looked normal. You couldn't even tell he was spooked. He stared at his reflection a few minutes, when, trying to see if anything had changed. But when will it show who he's inside? <sighs> it's a change that can't be seen just yet. When will my reflection show? Who I bone ride. <laughs> when will I be pigeon show? I just wanted to sing it again. I love that song. He stared at his reflection for a few minutes, trying to see if anything had changed. Weathering, wondering whether he'd gone off the deep end. <laughs> he couldn't tell. He didn't feel insane, but he figured most people, crazy people, didn't, or there'd be more of them checking themselves into proper care facilities. 
There was a watchfulness in him now that he didn't think was entirely his own, and tension that was seated at the base of his skull instead of his belly. A tickling, barely noticeable scritch-scratching against his collarbones and hips. He tried to wait it out. Collarbones? How many collarbones do you have? Is yeah. Just... Yeah, what the fuck? Your collarbone? Like, you got your one? Riley, you got one. Wait. Maybe it's, Come on, Riley. maybe it's because someone is riding his collarbone that he thinks he has two collarbones. Two plus. He very well th- could think he has ten. Who knows? He tried <laughs> to wait it out. He's got a very thick <laughs> upper part of his torso. His torso is just all collarbones. Like, one, two, three, four. Like, There's stacked out. It's, he's, got a, he's, got a sh- he's got like a washboard collarbone. It just sticks straight out. It's very hard for him to wear shirts. Very hard. He needs them custom made. He makes them himself, actually. (laughs) He tried to wait it out, but it soon became clear nothing was going to happen until he did, or said something to get the ball rolling. Well, if he was wrong, the worst thing that could happen was that he'd make a fool out of himself where nobody could see. Riley could deal with that, so he leaned forward a little. Little. Litter. A litter. He leaned forward and had a litter of puffs. (laughs) Oh! They'll just fall out of him. <laughs> I'm an alien pregnant with puppies. Shoot out the pups. Anyway, he leaned forward a little and cleared his throat. I know you're there, he said. No response. I know you're there, Riley repeated. I can feel you. Listen, I just want to talk to you. I won't freak. I just want to talk. No response. But the watchfulness slowly shifted into a vague feeling of indecisiveness that was at once promising and disconcerting. Come on, Riley coaxed quietly, trying to project a non-judgmental attitude. Show yourself. He had said something in the back of his mind, at the edges of his consciousness, since he'd woken up face down on the road. He suspected something was going on with him that couldn't be dismissed as another facet of his current Nisha-induced paranoia. I, uh, so, I, I have a, a quick, uh, quick uh, comment. Oh, fuck, I'm, I'm listening to too much Harmontown. It's making me stutter. Um, so, up to this point, Jay faley has been pretty clear in how those weird sensations kind of feel, but I, I'm not feeling this one as much. No. This one, I just feel like, so where Jay Family had like a, re- like a lot of great description about people, I don't know, busting other people's skulls with their fists, this it just feels very much like he grabbed a shaving kit, shaved. That, that, I, that I think was more to represent the, the methodical nature of uh, Riley's mourning process. Well, yeah, I get that, but... I think it kind of goes with what you're saying that because he's she's May J Valley yeah. is representing this methodical nature. It really does kind of take away from the the general description of like you said having yeah. these kind of feelings that's happening. Maybe maybe it's because they're stepping into like a particular narration style regarding Riley's chapters, but it wasn't like that before. Mm-mm. Before it was kind of exciting and still very, like... Like the whole truck description was really nice. That truck description was great. I wanted to bang that truck. It was a bad boy truck. And I was like, I drive you. Hello. Put you into fourth, fifth, third gear. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know trucks. We'll move on. We'll move on. We'll we'll talk about it at the end if we have anything left. He had said something in the back of his mind, at the edges of his consciousness, since he woken up face down on the road. Oh yeah, so he assumed it wasn't current Nishindu's paranoia. Okay, here we are. He'd been almost certain he hadn't worked his body open himself, because it was something he didn't do in his sleep, and the door had been locked, and he was almost positive he hadn't been drugged, so he'd let someone in and not remember. Yet when his eyes suddenly flashed silver, he still damn near pissed himself. Holy Holy fuck! Riley staggered back reflexively. His foot slipped on a wet floor tile and it just about sent him crashing backward into the bathtub. He caught himself through a combination of excellent balance and common flailing. But the additional scare made him curse even louder. You You prompt- No, that's- That's- Me! That's my character! 
I'm so sorry. I forgot. Just because it's not in quotation marks doesn't mean it's not System 6. You're right. I'm so sorry. But I'm not so. In the last episodes, I did some fun, like, audio editing on his voice, but I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. So, Your voice is fun editing uh, it enough. Takes, it takes a long time. You promised you wouldn't freak. An offended voice said in his ear. It made Riley jump again and whirl around, even though he already knew nobody would be there. His heart was trying to climb up his throat, probably to escape sharing his living quarters with whatever had taken up residence in Riley's body. <laughs> That's what his heart sounds like. <laughs> that is it, like, get me out, get me out of here. I don't want to die. <laughs> Uh oh, kill me! Get me out of here! It's a nightmare! Kill you! It didn't help that he recognized the voice. The last time he heard it, it had whispered husky praise against his neck as its owner fucking Fucked. stupid. <laughs> Holy fuck, he repeated, not as loudly as the first time, but with as much feeling. Fuck! Fuck! Who are you? What are you doing? Get the fuck out of my fucking head! No! The voice said, immediately and without room for debate. No way. I can't survive on my own. I need you. I'm not going anywhere. Well, I don't need you, Riley snapped, looking back in the mirror for lack of an actual visible counterpart. And I don't want you in me. Get out! Something shifted in him. It felt like tiny little hooks digging into his insides as his, as his, his squatter clung to him with all its might. No! It snarled. You can't make me! <laughs> I'm getting no. no you can't make me <laughs> Riley groaned quietly. It didn't hurt so much as it felt exceedingly uncomfortable, but the realization that the silver metal bastard was holding his body hostage made him almost as mad as it terrified him. It's my damn body, you fucking parasite <laughs> He growled. You can damn well share it for a bit. The squatter snapped back, not letting up. It's not like I'm hurting you. I'm not a parasite. I'm a smart armor and weapon system. I'm useful. You're hurting me! Riley gasped. Good night. My dad. Did you say good night to your parents? My daddy. <laughs> That's adorable. Does your dad want to join no. our reading session? No. <laughs> He's okay. Are you sure, Mr. Jesse? He's gone. I'm in the basement. <laughs> You can't hear anything. This place is insulated. It's my basement. It's where it's where I read erotica by myself. The hooks felt like knives now, vicious and in so deep. He could feel himself shake with adrenaline and an increasing burning sensation. <laughs> his fingers were clutching the edge of the sink so hard his knuckles turned white. Oh. The armor system muttered, sounding contrite. The burning lessened, then stopped. Sorry, I... just... sorry. Riley sighed a little with relief. He took a deep breath, then another one. All right. He needed to calm down. This is going to escalate real quick if he kept yelling at the thing... Oh, yelling, and the thing in him kept getting defensive. He was reasonably sure this wasn't a nightmare of the scarily realistic kind, which meant there really was something in him. Something that could hurt him badly. Uh. Riley... What else is new? I burp in every episode. That's true. That's very true. I wouldn't be true bone rider without that. No. Riley had no, no idea how to force it out, and it didn't seem all that smart to antagonize something that was snuggled up to his vitals, especially since it claimed it couldn't survive without him. So he closed his eyes, let his head fall forward, and tried to center himself despite the panic that was still tearing at him. He emptied his mind like his daddy had taught him to do when he needed to get clear-headed fast. How did that ha I want to flash back to daddy. Wait. I do too. Fuck, like, that sounds messed up. <laughs> okay, Ethan. Maybe in your dreams you can flash back to daddy. All right. <sighs> <laughs> but this time, there was someone right there with him, and that someone apparently got nervous and Riley stopped thinking. Riley? The thing, parasite, armor system, whatever asked, almost timidly. What are you doing? The hooks are back, giving Riley the mental image of the cat digging its claws into his leg to avoid getting unseated. 
I'm trying to calm down, Riley told it. Stop it with the clinging. The slight burning stopped immediately. Is it working? Came the hopeful inquiry. Because you promised you wouldn't get upset. Well, I didn't know there really was something in me. Riley sighed and lifted his head again to study his eyes once more. But he didn't see anything in them that didn't belong. I was bluffing. You scared the shit out of me. Yeah, right back at you. The squatter muttered. It still sounded as though there was someone speaking in Riley's ear, which was disconcerting to say the least. Stop calling me a squatter. You're squatting in my body. You're Slavic oh, squatting in my body. Stop, squat stop squatting in my body. Stop squatting in my body. <laughs> squat, 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 squat. That was lovely. I spit all over my laptop. <laughs> I'll call you whatever the hell I want. Bradley rubbed a hand over his face, trying to hang on to his hard-won composure. <sighs> okay, let's talk about this. Not in front of the mirror, though. The empty space behind him was giving Riley the creeps. He went out into the main room, opened the curtains to let the afternoon sunlight flood in, and looked out over the mostly empty parking lot. The air was hazy with dust, the scrawny bushes outside bowing deep in the wind. But Riley barely noticed. He was staring at, down at his truck, mm. parked in a corner near the emergency exit. Yeah. Yeah. The fuck truck. The fuck truck. Well, you know what? You sabotaged my truck! Riley gasped, a glimpse of memory raising his hackles. You were all over the engine, and then you jumped in my face, you fucker! Well, I was about to disintegrate. His unwelcome house guest defended itself. I needed a host. It was do or die. You couldn't have asked? How? I needed to be connected to you to communicate, and I didn't speak your language yet. Riley opened his mouth to demand clarification, but the thing kept right on talking. You know, this hasn't been fun for me, either. It said grouchily. I didn't plan to hitch a ride in an alien. Alien? You're an alien? <laughs> Riley squawked. It was a perfect it time for your Miss Fowl voice. <laughs> It probably shouldn't have surprised him, especially considering that dream he so wasn't thinking about right now. But it still floored him. I got hijacked by an alien? You're the alien. The squatter insisted. I'm not from around here. It must have realized that this was a big deal for its involuntary host, because it stayed quiet while Riley tried not to hyperventilate or think too closely about the alien movies and their take on extraterrestrial encounters. When he was done checking his belly and chest for signs of distension, it added reassuringly. Well, it, uh, sorry, I looked away for a second. Listen, I'm not gonna mess with you, okay? Or breed in you. God, that's disgusting. How do I know you're telling the truth? Riley asked, filing away the information that apparently the alien could suck general concepts out of his mind as easily as focused thoughts and language data. You could be trying to lull me into a full sense of security until your eggs hatch or something. Yeah. His squatter hopped. Or I could just barf into your brain right now and be done with it. It was an emergency, you asshole. I had no choice but to find a host, and you were the only one compatible organism around. Can't we just agree to cohabitate for a while? I, I swear I won't nest or hatch or, or whatever other gross things you can come up with. I'll be no trouble. You, you won't hardly know I'm there. Riley sat down on the edge of the bed heavily. He swallowed, feeling completely out of his depth. For the first time in years, he allowed himself to wish his father was still alive. He could have used his advice and reassurance. Flashback to daddy. A bad I was going to say, like, why is his dad so prevalent in this chapter right like now? Like, now. He didn't, it's never been talked about before. Never been talked about. All right. Is this permanent? He asked, scared of the answer, but needing to know. No. The squatter said immediately. We're not fully bonded. I only did the basic hookups, nothing more. There Is was it... a basic hookup in the previous chapter. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is a temporary fix until I can find myself a suitable host and arrange for my relocation. Think of me as a, a roommate or something. And until then, I'm walking around with you in my head? Somehow, this didn't sound like a particularly good idea for Riley. I'm an intel- oh, What? Sorry. I said good idea, but it was actually a good deal for Riley. Hey, on, if, in my opinion, the more we fuck up, the better. Good. Because then it's not 
it's paraphrasing. It is paraphrasing. <laughs> I'm an intelligent armor and weapons system. The disembodied voice reminded him in a tone that suggested this was something to be awed by if you weren't a complete moron. I can and will protect you in return for riding your bones for a bit. <gasps> Whoa! Riding your bones, ri ri riding your bones. Riding your bones for a bit. I tell you, don't give a shit. When bone rider is right there, you got to smile everywhere, yeah. Because bone rider is your friend. You follow no the basic rhythmic structure when you sing. I always change it up. I get bored and I'm like, let's do something else. I was doing it four four. Let's go to six eight. Do whatever I, feel I like don't know doing. anything about tempo, so you can't really ask me either. I'm a strong major. I know. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Not a complete moron. <laughs> I can and will protect you in return for riding your bones for a bit. I've already taken the liberty of hardening your skeletal structure. Ooh. Did you know that your left knee was all kinds of fucked up? He had, actually. Bull riding was hard on the body. Dick riding. Which is why he, qu which is why he quit it after only one season and never had tried to go pro. I could have gone pro if I didn't join the Navy. In the Navy. It takes a special kind of crazy to keep climbing on one mean bull after the other. And while Riley had the skill, he didn't have the ambition. Yeah, that'd do it. The voice muttered. Apparently in reaction to his thoughts about the wreck that had damaged his knee. I fixed it. I can also shield your skin from the inside or outside if necessary. I'm not a freeloader. I can pull my weight and then some. And also talked a lot. Catching that thought, the squatter hurried to declare, I'll be quiet as a mouse. And fell silent. Grateful for the opportunity to digest what had happened, Riley scooted up the bed and leaned against the headboard. He didn't particularly like his options. Even if the alien let him try, which is doubtful, he couldn't tell anybody about his situation because he had no idea which authorities to approach or whether the creature would show up on x-rays or in blood tests. Chances were he wouldn't get to find out because he'd be declared crazy and locked up before he'd finished his tale. Of course, he might actually be insane. He was hearing voices. It wasn't all that improbable that he'd simply snapped. But Riley had never been prone to flights of fancy. There was no history of mental illness in his family. And the Misha situation, while painful, was hardly the toughest spot he'd ever been in, and thus unlikely to be the thing to push him over the edge. All things considered, he'd rather believe in aliens than contemplate the idea that his mind had fractured. Yeah, there was nobody I mean, who wouldn't? What? Who wouldn't? Right, exactly. Right. I mean, There's every... nobody he could turn to either way. Don't worry about it. He had no close... What? I said, don't worry about it. Okay. I was starting a thought, but the Skype lag. Oh, Skype, damn you. He had no close friends who listened to this kind of story and believe him. What was left of his family was scattered until the four winds, and he had no desire to contact them. He doubted they would have helped anyway. Not one of them had dealt well with the revelation that Riley was gay. He'd be lucky if they even picked up the phone. Misha, Riley gritted his teeth. <coughs> Misha, <coughs> Misha wasn't an option anymore. Riley couldn't evict the creature on his own, and he wasn't sure he would have done it if he could have, because even though it had jumped on board uninvited, it hadn't done so out of malice. He understood survival instinct. He knew what it was like to be desperate enough to do shit you wouldn't normally do. It said a lot about his alien squatter that it was trying to win him over instead of simply hurting him until he submitted. Also, yes, Riley did remember all those awesome orgasms, and he was honest enough with himself to admit that fantastic sex made a persuasive argument. It wasn't because he was lonely. He wasn't. He wasn't lonely. It was he Stop saying that he's lonely. He's not lonely. He's not lonely. He okay? likes being by himself. He likes it. He likes it. Stop coming he after it. it. He likes, I'm not lonely. Mom, leave me alone. I'm, I'm not, not bored. Fine. I don't need anyone. I'm not. Okay, I'm not. Bo I like it. This is how I like to live my life. Just leave me alone. I like to sit by myself. 
contemplate the beige ceilings above me. I like to sit in puddles of cum and think about my dad. That's, I'm a simple man. I'm a simple man, I'm a simple mom, man okay? with simple needs, Mom. Don't mind me. God. Now if, you ex- me ha- now if you'll excuse me, my puddle's drying up. Gotta get Good back to work. Mother. Good day, Mother. I need to continue wetting my cum puddle. <laughs> it is dry and crusty, and I, I don't like the texture. I'm becoming adhesed to the floor, which is just how I like it. It gives me stability in this otherwise insane <laughs> world in which I live. <laughs> uh. He'd be happy in his own before he met Misha, and he'd be over Misha soon enough. He wasn't seriously contemplating granting sac- sanctuary to an alien because it would give him somebody to talk to. Because that would have been pathetic! Right. As I was reading the sentence, I realized more and more how pathetic it actually was. And I'm like, oh, you poor guy. You're like, this alien creature is in me, but I'm getting lonely. I'm just a little lonely. Not too lonely, just a little bit. <laughs> I mean, if I had to admit it to myself, I guess, yeah, there's some things that, you know. But I never I tell you, me. Mom. Oh, never tell you, Mom. Go away. Go back upstairs. Get the dog. God. <laughs> this is going to be short term short short term short term i just got my short term uh this is going to be short term he said biting his lip and wondering if he was about to make the mistake of his life cross my heart and hope to die the squatter promised eagerly can i stay can i kick you out no i swear you won't want to i'll, I'll be quiet as a mouse riley suggested dryly as a whole pack of mice there was a brief sense of movement under Riley's skin again, but this time it felt nice, warm, and needing, like a massage. Thank you. The alien said softly, you're welcome. Riley grabbed a pillow, stuffed it between his back and the wooden headboard, had it, Jesus, the wooden headboard and snatched the remote from the bedside table. He needed some mindless entertainment to distract himself from the fact that he'd either just made a deal with the creature from outer space or accepted his, dis- his descent into madness. I swear I know English and can read. Holy shit. Right now, either thought made his belly churn with anxiety and his jaws clench with tension. Don't think. Uh, no, just yourself. what you're thinking. Don't think. I don't, don't need think. a reason. Don't think. <laughs> the screen lit up. Dramatic music filled the motel room and then the sound of an explosion. Bow! Apparently, they hit on Die Hard Marathon. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> a few hours of watching Bruce Willness. Willness. Bruce Willness. A God. few hours of watching Bruce Willness and John Makalon. Maybe you should just finish this. God damn. A few hours of watching Bruce. I feel like John Travolta at the ground or at the um. Ad- Adonam Mons Lane. Yeah, exactly. That's I wonder how I, he'd say Zach Galifianakis. He can say Zach Galifianakis, but not Idina Menzel. Can he? I, I've never heard. I've seen We should just, like, send John Travolta a John bunch Malkovich. of names. He's like, can you pronounce these? There's a Twitter that I had retweeted. There was a tweet that I had retweeted that after that. It was like, thank you, John Travolta. I thought that was funny. What? Well, hold the fuck up. You're on Twitter. You don't follow Serving Pleasure Podcast. Or me. Harry, what the fuck? Ethan, I don't know if you know this about me, but I am an 80-year-old woman in this body. Yeah, no, I'm just saying it's one button you have to press. Hey, listen up, everybody. This is is about the time podcast you normally bring it up. If you're not already, please follow the Serving Pleasure podcast on Twitter, at Serving PP. Or me. (laughs) Or me, at Four Eights. F-O-U-R-E-I-G-H-T-H-S. Or me. Harry, not Harry. H A R I, not H A R R Y. This is the first time I've heard of it. <laughs> Surprise! I have it. If you wanna, if you wanna uh, see me do live tweets of the movie Minions, I recently hey. did that. That's a good movie. If you you wanna... shut the fuck up. You didn't like Minions? No. Minions had a good soundtrack. 
soundtrack. How did you not like Minions? The Minions sound- okay, it's, it, it, it's, it's not fair to say that Minions had a good soundtrack. These are the type of fucking aliens that I don't like. If they're even aliens, I don't know what the fuck Minions are. It wasn't very clear. I thought I the know. movie would detail their origin story, but it doesn't. The, 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 the Minions- They're like yellow penguins. Sure. The Minion soundtrack was just a bunch of licensed music, and they put it in places where it shouldn't have been. It didn't match any of the action that was happening on the screen at the time. There was a Beatles soundtrack, like a real one of the chiller ones, like from the Sgt. Pepper days, to a giant robot fight sequence. Wow, I did not pay that close attention to the movie, because every time the song came on, I was like, I like this song. This is good. And then I went, my dad put it on one night, and, like, let me tell you something about my dad. My dad wants to watch the most disgusting TV ever. Like, if there's a shoot 'em up explosion. Like the movie shoot em up stab, What? Like the movie shoot 'em up with uh, uh, Paul Giamatti. My dad's probably seen it. My dad is the man that watched nude nuns with big guns on Netflix. Okay? <laughs> I didn't know that was a real thing. I don't have to watch it. That is a thing. Hey, and we should do. Father- oh, that, that reminds me. We should do a live watch uh, and put it on uh, somewhere of us watching that movie. That would be all. We should do we'll that. Do, that would be amazing. We'll do it with Wesley next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back in town next weekend. Will you really? Yeah. No. There's a, there's we, a concert we, that weekend. What concert? Uh, Cake and Dr. Dog. <gasps> it's too late to get a ticket now, probably. I know, and I'm also going home next weekend because it's my mom's retirement party. Fuck you, mom. Everything Fuck is, you, mom! Everything is terrible. Congrats, mom. Thanks for working for 30 years. Suck it up. Fucking idiot. Now let me sit in my cum pile. <laughs> it's a pile now. It's not a puddle. It is a puddle. It's upgraded. <laughs> Throughout this time, it's just been growing. Slowly Throughout just- this time. The screen lit up, and he was watching Bruce Willis as John McClane wisecrack and blow up shit. Oh, wait. I'm just going to start this again. A few of watching Bruce Willis as John McClane wisecrack and blow up shit should do the trick. Riley shifted his shoulders, slid his ass down until he achieved the ideal couch potato slouch. Oh, shit. That's really good. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And settled in to watch. What do you think is the ideal couch potato slouch? I don't Listeners... Know. Harry, Send us your... Harry forgot to say the thing. I'll, I'll just End do it. Of chapter eight. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> now we can talk. Now we can talk. The ideal couch potato slouch? Yeah, I wonder what the ideal couch potato slouch is. Hey, listeners, if you know what the ideal couch potato slouch is, please put it in the comments. Or you can tweet it at us on at ServingPP or at 4 eights or at Harry Not Harry. We have the most confusing Twitter handles to say out loud. Me too. <laughs> Especially yours. For F O U R. E I G H T H S. G H. You know, eighths. A word G- much easier to say than spell. <laughs> I do know. Mine is, mine, like, if you know how to spell my name, which the pr- first part's easy. Probably not a lot of people do. I would, I would say that is correct. Sorry. Uh, tangent, tangent. Um, how's the chapter? Oh shit, we're at almost like an hour. How's it? <laughs> and we thought this was going to be a short episode. Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> I also read kind of slow. Yeah. I also I read- interrupted a lot, and with the Skype lag, it's hard. We're doing it again! We're on a tangent again! I'm, I'm, watching too- again. I'm listening uh, to too much Armantown. The chapter was fine. I think it was a little anticlimactic, because this is what we're coming back to after our hiatus. I think yeah. that it was a good idea to, like, leave off. At least we left off with the sex scene before we got back into it. That's true. So, really, yeah, this is just picking up where we left off. But I think it's so funny that, like, that sex scene had happened, and then he woke up, and it was, I don't know, it was weird. Because I guess he does acknowledge it, but then it's, I don't know. I mean, it's the real meeting of the two characters. They, 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 they had sex somehow without... I'm not going to get into the specifics of it. It's not important. Well, I think it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can talk about it. So, like, did, so he's like, oh, I feel myself opened up. I would have done that myself. But system six is in your body. You can't leave your body because then it will die. So then how, would it, was it in your dream? So were, was he doing it himself? Was he, you know, just. I, I would believe that system six has a, just, enough oh. knowledge of the, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it looks like you're goat seeing 
at me, and I I don't appreciate that. <laughs> it's really scary. I can see myself doing it. It's like a combination between here's Johnny and Goatsy, if you know what both of those images are. What's Goatsy? Goatsy is the uh, it's just a picture of a guy pulling his ass open as wide as possible. You asked. I simply provided the answer. You know, I'm learning a lot this week. I just last night learned what two girls, one cup is. Well, you lived for a long time without knowing. I could have lived longer without knowing, in all honesty. You look up Tub Girl next. That's another great shock image. Or Lemon Party. Or Meat Spin. Or Pain Olympics. Don't look up any of the things that I just said. I know they're all old internet things. Don't look them up. <laughs> if you if you don't already know what they are. I don't think I... I think I'm... Yeah, There's no. also a video of a guy taking a uh, mason jar and putting it up his ass, and then it breaks, and then he has to get all the pieces out. What? Why? No. The internet is a bad place. <clears throat> you should leave. I should leave. No, the listeners right now should leave the internet. <laughs> Everyone. Sorry, no, I gotta talk about the chapter. I gotta talk, Let's about, talk the about the chapter. chapter. Let's talk about the chapter. I think it was a good reintroduction to uh jay Fowley's writing style because it did kind of ease back into it because we complained in the middle there about how it wasn't as detailed but as the chapter went on like after that point exactly it got just as detailed as i remembered that's true like after he started talking to system six it definitely did pick up a little more yeah i, I forgot that it was a good mix of like detail and casualness at the same time yeah like that ending thing he slid his ass down until he'd achieved the ideal couch, couch potato, potato slouch it's real good Real good. So, yeah, I think it's just, yeah, it takes some time to get back into. But I'm really looking forward, though, to seeing what happens next. Because now you know that there's this relationship. And you know, like, we all know that shit is totally going to go down with Misha. Right. You wouldn't have an armor system. You wouldn't have System 6B an armor system from outer space if there wasn't going to be some kind of climactic fight scene at the end. Right. Which is really interesting to think about because Riley's just a dude. Is he going to be this fucking me. tanking one-man army against the entirety of the Russian mob? Yeah, and especially that could get really interesting because Misha, in his previous chapter, was all about how he wanted Riley back and how he fucked up, so... I don't, it'll are, be interesting. It'll be really interesting. I feel like I, I'm going to guess, I have a hypothesis, that there is going to be a chapter, though, where, like, Misha and Riley are going to get intimate, and System 6 either gets jealous... He's going to rip his dick off from the inside. He's going to ri- he's gonna suck it back into his body. <laughs> like, oh! Like, nope! Ah! No! <laughs> and only releases it once Riley has left Misha's presence. <laughs> uh, it's going to happen. He's going to suck it in like a little spaghetti. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh, gross. Riley's Dick is System 6's spaghetti. I'm thinking a lady in the tramp it. <laughs> if, if that would only... Wait. Lady in the tramp, my dick, girl. Hey, girl. You see lady in the tramp? <laughs> Let's try that with this dick. <laughs> and then, like, gonna... she, she moves... <laughs> it's getting intimate. She moves in for, like, the, the filleting. And then all of a sudden, the dick goes inside the dude's body. How do you respond? <laughs> Uh, How do you respond? Quick, you have five seconds. I'd be like, oh, whoa, 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 hey, what? Oh, what? Gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. Where did it go? I gotta go. Everything's gonna go. What? What? Did that leave? I gotta leave. <laughs> I think if it happened, I'd be like, oh my god! <laughs> Throw up in the dick hole. Oh, <laughs> Ethan. I lost my weird sexual outlet. Okay. What was your sexual outlet before? I don't know. <laughs> I lost my weird... Improv? Probably? Probably. Talking to Sam or Jacob? Fuck, I don't know. They're not coming on the podcast. Just ignore that I said those names. They don't even listen. Wait, Fuck are you them. talking about my yeah. newest intern, Sam? Yeah, because I'm talking about your newest intern. Like, hey, Fuck you, you Sam. <laughs> Fuck you, Jacob. Neither of you I... listening to this podcast. You can go, uh, Lady and Tramp a dick. <laughs> lady and Tramp... We could make our own shocker video of no, but I don't want to do it with people. I want to do it with like Ken dolls and vegetables. That's not a shock video. That's just weird. It's avant garde shock. I like that. 
No, if you want to see avant-garde shock, look up uh, Cannibal Holocaust Simpsons. Don't do it. That video fucked me up for a whole day. What? Why would the Simpsons ever do that? Because it's... I, I, it was unofficial. It was one of their couch gags that they took out because it was too much. Oh, God. I, I can't make that up. I, that would, like, ruin my childhood. It ruined my entire day. And now that I'm thinking about it again, I'm sad. Um... You know, thinking of doing Ken dolls and stuff, though. Hold on, let's wrap up this episode, and we can okay. talk about this after. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, thanks so much for uh, g- catching back up with Bone Rider, all two of you very faithful listeners. Mom. Yeah, and thanks for catching up back up with us. Yeah, I mean, we're happy to do this, and I'm really excited to get back into Bone Rider. Hopefully, from now on, we'll we'll make this a more routine thing, because I, uh, we'll, I don't want to talk production on the podcast. Um, well, that's post-talk. Yeah, that's that that's 